Wait! Stop! Stop! Stop doing yard work. Don't do it. No more. This is not yard work. These? These are art supplies. So, today, what we are going to do, we're going to do stick painting. Here is the first part of our stick painting. So what you will need to get started, an old picture frame with nothing in it and a paintbrush, a little bit of acrylic paint and your handy dandy snips for pruning. You will also need sticks. Stick painting, part one. First order of business, paint that picture frame. Have fun with it. Whatever color you want, doesn't matter. I chose a little bit of silver and lightly brushed it over black so that you could see through it, kind of a shabby chic thing. Feel free to paint whatever you want. Paint flowers on it, paint dinosaurs on it. Just have fun with it. Stick painting part two. Here comes the easy part. Take your sticks and cut them so that they are the same height as whichever direction you want your picture frame to go, whether it be up and down or, and if you have a picture frame that's this big, go for it. Just get bigger sticks. And then you will, as you can see, take a little bit of hot glue once you have all of your sticks cut and just hot glue the sticks in different layers, pick different sizes of sticks, pick some that have a V shape or a W or that have a really cool curvy shape because what you want is you want the layered effect. This is sort of a 3D painting that we're going for here. And this is your forest. It is a deep, dark forest or a lovely forest filled with butterflies but this is the front of your painting. So have fun doing your yard work. Now it's time to do just a little bit of prep work for the back of your 3D painting. So I was lucky, I found an old canvas panel just lying around and I have a little bit of spray paint. because As you can see, the painting that was already on the canvas panel is pretty dark. So feel free to use wood or if you have a canvas or any other flat surface to make the back of your painting. So here's what I learned while I was waiting for my canvas to dry. If you are going to make fake mashed potatoes with a milk substitute, always make sure your soy milk actually says unsweetened on the container. And now it is time to ever so carefully cut your sticks to the exact precise size of your frame. Now you will want to use a ruler because this is very important to get this exact and precise before you cut. Always measure twice, cut once. I don't know what on earth that crazy girl was talking about measuring. Measuring in my class for anyone who has ever taken a retro recycling class, you know that all of my crafts are very forgiving. And that means no templates, no measuring. Here's your measurement. So sticks, they're natural. They come in all different sizes, all different offshoots. So just go ahead and if you see an offshoot that you really like and that you think should be part of your forest, then cut it and then make it fit. If it ends up going over, you can cut off a little bit more. So don't worry about measuring because that's just not happening, not in my class. So my original intention for this stick painting class was to go elegant and to maybe do a painting to go behind the sticks that was gradiated from dark down to light as if it was a sunset. Then I started thinking, sunset, wouldn't it be great to have a Yeti with his pet squirrel just walking along in the sunset, 
behind the trees because it's a forest picture and you have to have a Yeti and his pet squirrel. So that's exactly what I did. And here's where we play with the lighting just a little bit because since this is a 3D effect, then depending on how you want to hang it and or set it for display, then you can move it around and get your lighting just right so that the shadows fall on your Yeti as he walks along in the sunset. Here's a really quick behind the scenes look at the painting because since your sticks are going to be 3D, then this becomes a little bit more like an open shadow box. So I just made some little corners to hold my painting to the back. And it actually, it stands up. You don't even need a L bracket type stand, but you can also, if you wish, go ahead and put a picture hanger and you can always hang it on your wall or you can just stand it up somewhere that's going to catch some nice evening light. You've got questions about how to do this? Oh lordy, because chances are I can answer them. So everyone who's taken any of my retro recycling classes know that I do a lot of trial and error, a lot of failure, and I get to tell y'all, you get the benefit of what I did wrong or did right, but it took 10 times longer than it should have. And so go ahead and shoot us a comment in the comment section or just message us and I will do my best to get back to you with a little bit more in the tips and tricks for how to make your very own stick painting. And feel free, you don't have to do something whimsical like a Yeti. How's my lighting there? You can do whatever you want. In fact, I've seen some of these where they just do the sticks and then they hang that on the wall and forget about doing a back painting entirely. So have fun and we would love to see your finished projects.